No, the beginning at the beginning. Oh no. That's the other Welsh modernist. Terra Valiae. Welsh modernist poetics. So David Jones. His inheritance was macaronic or multilingual. So in this book, Macaronic Poetry by Appleton Morgan from the seventeenth century says jest or ribald song, a species of composition thence resulting has been dubbed macaronic. The diversion of scholars being to literature what opera buffet is to music. Something to be composed as Ruffini played Offenbach with one finger and yet becoming in time so fertile. The other um, inheritance is the liturgical macaronic, such as the dream of the rude and Piers Plowman, and we have a bit of here. Um, summation of Jones's work by Drew Milne. Amid the ruins of modernism, the sprawling edifice of David Jones's poetry towers above more accommodating rubble in the shape of a severe folly of spirits. Jones's inheritance of satire and sacrament seems apt taking from one rule-breaking formal innovation and the other pious seriousness and neo-Thomist, as Thomas Aquinas, autodidactic fervour of his etymological and historiographical and literary intertextual work. I'm going to argue that the very act of placing these languages together in one place represents the politic of the anathemata. Medievalist pluralism segues into modernist formal experimentation under Jones's composition. So can Hannah and friends, or Anglo-Saxon syllabic verse, both, wheelisk man, wheelisk being um, Anglo-Saxon for foreigner, of Gilead break this late lambing year, already they have put wood into his bread, but 18 days to the maying, they said, it's Tuesday's child is choose this year's Mab of the Green, Mundi Domina, or was she Monday's total beauty? So King Haned is Welsh syllabic poetry. Joan says, hard to learn, formidable lingo referred to, and especially the deposits of which is the subtle vehicle should be the concern not only of the persons of Welsh affinity, but of the English also. Um, he also said in an acceptance speech for an honorary degree, the mythos of the Mabinog Yesi that gave Kanghanev to space itself. So Jones's novitiate as a Welsh bard pose seems to also be a good fit, eschewing the separation of artist and art. So in Welsh syllabic poetry, you've got 24 metres, um, and basically, there's a hemi-stitch in the line, and the consonants or the assonants, and sometimes the vowel sounds are echoed either side of the line. Um, so I just want to talk about how people in English poetry got to King Um So generally, obviously... Jared Manley Hopkins on the top left here is a great influence in terms of sacramental poetry, not only King Hanez on Dylan Thomas there and on Jones. Jones is also drawing from an Aaron's Godovin in, this, in the case of in parenthesis. And then we've got all these other modernists as well, uh, multilingual modernists, Bunting from Northumbrian verse and and Eirin, Skanothin, another kinvay of poets, according to Rick Cadell. Uh, Joyce, also inspiration from King Haned in Finnegan's Wake. And then we've got Pound, Eliot, McDermott, who are drawing on more Latinate Greek uh, sources. Olsen is also compared with Jones quite often, because Maximus Poems was coming out at the time Anathemata was around. And then we've got Eros Bowen there on the left, who's a quixotic entry, a Welsh language modernist who 
in full circle gets King Hane from Thomas as well as being a Welsh language practitioner. Now I want to talk a little bit about O'Sullivan, Maggie O'Sullivan. Now, temporal cousins, I'm calling them, in order to justify using this quote, basically. So there's a little bit of her poetry there. And Charles Bernstein says, O'Sullivan's visceral vernacular or autothonous verse tilling the inter-Indigenous brainscape of the Celtic, Northumbrian, Welsh, Gaelic, Scots, Irish, Anglo-Saxon, translocal, voco, titillated strabismus. It's not that O'Sullivan writes directly in any one of these languages of the Isles, but they form a foundation of force field out of which her own distinctive language emerges. So I think you could probably use that to describe um, Jones. Um, Jones says of King Hannah, sound and sense were regarded as having a parity. So the verse structure and meanings of the words used in making the structure were regarded as forming one indissoluble unity. If that is so, then the ascetic principle of the Bardic tradition is beyond reproach. And one can see why it produced so objective an art form. So going back to Bernstein, from Bernstein's strabismus, there is a useful heuristic in reading Jones's work in which sonic multiplicity arises within a syntactic familiarity provided by English. This lexical squint strabismus creates a kanghane, the consonance within its linguistic force field, a Celtic harmony made from Anglo-Saxon verbiage. The other reason I wanted to use King Hamed is this word glek, which is like a consonance. Um, the auditory and performative sonic glek of Jones, an impact of consonance on the ear is the glek, which chimes with the implied spatiality of Jones's King Hamed, the harmonization or chiming of space itself. Jones's autothonous archipelagic modernist text, the anathemata, creates its own translinguistic nexus, I argue. Jones, unlike O'Sullivan's subverbal basic unit, is the word, therefore opening up channels to allusion, etymology, historiography. The unity between text, artist, and place directs the reader to a vector of modernistic drive. True, Milne says, a materia poetica determined by place, forged in exile from the placelessness of the cosmopolis. So I get the idea archipelagic modernism from our great chair's book, Poet of the Medieval Modern. So this quote on the left of the slide, you can see into two periods, the period before the political union of England and Wales, and the period after the union. It's my hope that the future historian will have a third period to describe. This clearly was to be the period of Welsh modernism. So Saunders Lewis, their own career as prolific writer of criticism and political essays, was itself an attempt to define to create the conditions for a modernist literature. And then going back to um, Fran Brooks here present. She says, historiography must read the history of Britain as a composite of languages and people rather than a series of discontinuous cultural and linguistic occupations, even as it acknowledges the violence of the trauma of that colonization. Also, we've got Robert Crawford in Devolving English Literature argues that modernism should be read as a provincial revolution against a complacent Anglo-centric literary establishment. So Jones takes the extra step of entering the linguistic universe of the provincial through his pronunciation notes and the inclusion of exolinguistic elements, providing a sonic unity as one text. Um, Jones in his autodidactic um, Doggedness dares to step outside the modern ideology regarding separation and exile and with an exile zeal towards the Welsh language and literature elevates Welsh to the level of 
liturgic apotheosis. Um, the very fact, I argue, mixing languages is an, a political mixing of Anglo-Saxon sources and Welsh and Latinate liturgy goes against, for example, Ezra Pound's trajectory towards ancient Greece. Instead, as implications with the introduction of the more marginalised Archipelagian Celtic origins, Jones' modernism through Milne, uh, as Milne points out, the splendour does not cohere a mosaic of mythopoetic delusion, delusions fragments that Jones does not tidy up the fragmentary nature of his work, echoing Nenius. I heaped together all I could find, the central figure of the Mabinog as Christ. Also, I, I uh, regard Jones as a Welsh modernist because of this quotation by Gwyn Williams, the absence of a centre design. Uh, an architectural quality is not a weakness in old Welsh poetry, but results quite reasonably from a specific view of composition. English and most Western European creative activity has been conditioned by the inheritance from Greece and Rome, like Pound. So this is uh, Dilworth, Thomas Dilworth, suggesting a sort of circular circularity to the anathemata. Drew Milne, again, is attempt to excavate ideological models can be read against itself for critical and material insights. And his formal innovations can be rethought, particularly as stress on conflictual class registers and the counterpoint of colloquial speech and poetic artifice evident in the dialectical juxtapositions of formal or liturgical inscription and the dialects of soldiers and conscripts in, in parenthesis. So this ideological blindness, I argue, provides a level playing open field for Welsh and Anglo-Saxon to exist as siblings in the lexical matrix of the page. They select and acrolect, fuse to make one modernist linguistic continuum. Jones says, I myself today cannot be regarded as a Welsh artist, of sorts by the University of Wales, for not even the university authorities can argue with the muse of history she determines all until, until deeds of Arden. Thus, by good fortune, she allows me to be accounted one half Welsh, if one half Cockney with a dash of Italian. And after all, London was once a Britano Romanic herbs. Raymond Williams says of borders, a place and identity, I used to think it was especially problematic, but now I see it was characteristic. Jones and Lewis both trace the possibility of Welsh modernism. Lewis explicitly, Jones by the simple fact of inclusion, the non-elision of Brythonic tradition in close parataxis with Anglo-Saxon and sacramental Latin. Jones's modernism qualifies as Welsh modernism if one takes into account its multiplicity, its non-linearity, its pluralist identities and its provincialism. Jones points towards a possibility of this third phase of Welsh literature mentioned by Saunders Lewis and explored tentatively before the dawn of this epoch by authors like Avos Bowen, Carrado Pritchard, Lynette Roberts. Raymond Williams says of modernist discourse, old and dissolving identities are at best raw material for an exchange of new and deliberately provisional universals which settle identify as the past form which they must be escape to the precarious and invigorating incitement of the new. Saunders Lewis says, Saunders Lewis it is not literature in its own right and cannot be properly understood without recognizing that it was an integral part of European Christian literary tradition and that it had sucked the nutrition of the major literary movements 
of that continent over the centuries. I think Jones would be of similar mindset. If you consider the, the macaronic, the multilingual verse, and by dropping Welsh and Latin into English syntaxes as either nounal or adjectival forms, the monolingual English leader, reader is provided with an insight into the plurality and projected modernist multilingualism and true British brythonic poetic that represents its diversity, not as a monolingual cultural jingoism, but as a pluralist, albeit fantastical, discursive sonic image. So it was the Mabinog David Jones, Jesus that gave Kanghaned to space it, itself. Like further advancements in multilingual poetics, Jones, in his distance from Welsh culture, puts Welsh on a par with scripture and like O'Sullivan provides a sonic and spatial zone of negotiation within the text to dispel hegemonistic monolingual discursive ideology and provide the ultimate in provincial modernistic critique on dominant literary discourse. Thank you very much.